Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Designers Learning jQuery podcast. In today's episode, we're going to cover installing jQuery into a project. The first thing that we'll take a look at is the sample project structure, and this is the project structure that will get used throughout this podcast and also the project structure that is used throughout the jQuery for Designers book. So I have a sample project set up here, and if you grab the folder that contains your project, and drop it directly onto the Sublime Text icon, the entire project opens in Sublime Text and we have easy access to all of the files and folders in our project over here in the left hand pane. First up we have an images folder which is currently empty but will contain all of the image assets for our project. Next we have a scripts folder which will contain all of our JavaScripts and we currently have an empty file in here named scripts.js. This is just a placeholder file where we'll write our JavaScript once we start working on a project. Next, we have a styles folder, which has a style.css. And once again, this is just an empty placeholder file when we'll be writing our own CSS. And finally, we have our content or our index.html file. And this is just a very short file, but you do see that we have our style sheet attached and we also have our JavaScript file attached. Now let's take a look at the two different ways that we can install jQuery into this project. The first way to install jQuery is to download it. So if we head over to jQuery.com, we can click the giant orange download jQuery button. Once you arrive on the downloading jQuery page, the first thing you'll probably notice is that we currently have two different versions or two different branches of jQuery. The main difference between them is that jQuery 2.x does not support Internet Explorer 6, 7, or 8. If you're working on a project where you do need to support IE 6, 7, or 8, then you will need to use the 1.x branch of jQuery. If, however, you don't need to support those older versions of IE, you're free to use the 2.x branch. Throughout this podcast and also in the book, jQuery for Designers, I use the jQuery 2.x branch. Both branches are being actively developed and maintained and have the same functions and methods, so all the examples will work with either branch just fine. So once you've selected a branch of jQuery, the next thing you'll notice is that you have two different types of files to choose from. We have the uncompressed development version which is great if you're learning and would like to read through the jQuery library to understand how it works, or if you're a developer who wants to work on jQuery and help to make it faster, sleeker, or better. The compressed production version is the version that you want to download to include in projects. So we'll go ahead and click that link and the file will download to our computer. Now we can just grab that folder, I'm sorry, grab that file and drop it straight into our scripts folder and it sits alongside our scripts.js. You'll notice that the version number is included in the file name, but that same version number is also included in the file itself, so it's not strictly necessary. I like to remove it and keep my file name short and easy to remember, so let's go ahead and rename that file to jQuery.js. Now all we need to do to use jQuery in our project is to add another script tag to our HTML file with the path to our new jQuery file. It's important to note that I added jQuery before the scripts.js file. If we write code in scripts.js that's dependent upon jQuery, jQuery will need to be loaded into the page first before our scripts.js file. Otherwise, our scripts won't work. Also notice that while we loaded the style sheets on the head section of the document, we're loading our JavaScripts in the bottom of the document just before the closing body tag. This will help our pages appear to load faster. Our site visitors will start to see the page rendering more quickly when JavaScripts are loaded in the footer. The second way to include jQuery in a project is to include a CDN copy of jQuery. And on the download page at jQuery.com, if you scroll down, you'll find a section called Using jQuery with a CDN. Now using one of these CDN hosted copies of jQuery is very simple. You'll just grab a copy of this script tag right here. And you'll use that instead of this script tag where we included our local copy. 
Now using a CDN has a couple of advantages. Number one, a file that is located on a server that's geographically closer to you will download more quickly than one that's further away. So for example, I live in Los Angeles, California. If there's a copy of jQuery on a server in Phoenix, Arizona, and a copy of jQuery on a server in London, England, the copy of jQuery on the server in Phoenix will download more quickly for me than the one that's in London, England. With a CDN, the same file is hosted on many different servers all around the globe, so all of your site visitors get to download a copy that's geographically close to them. A second advantage of using a CDN is that many different websites can use the same file. So if one of your site visitors has previously visited another site that's using the jQuery CDN version of jQuery, they'll already have that version of jQuery cached in their browser and they won't need to download it again, which is another little performance boost. There is, however, one potential issue with using a CDN hosted copy of jQuery, which will be especially important as you are learning and practicing jQuery. If you want to work on your jQuery skills, you'll need to make sure that your computer is connected to the internet if you want to use a CDN hosted copy of jQuery. Otherwise, the jQuery file won't be available to you. So if you are learning and practicing your jQuery and you'd like to be able to do that even when you're not connected to the internet, you will want to make sure that you download your own local copy of jQuery and have that available for you in your projects. That's all I have for today. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you next time. If you enjoyed this video and would like to learn more about jQuery, pick up a copy of my book, jQuery for Designers, available now.